So we're here, this week we're here to uh, present the new revised legs edition of the, the handbook. And um, my role is I work with legs as a training specialist, but um, I've also been working in the sector for, uh, for a while. So we've developed a training of trainers program um, and then train participants to then go on and train regionally um, or you know at the country level. We've done a lot of the training of trainers in different regions. So we've done Southern Africa region, we've done Asia, we've done Central America and the Caribbean. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a fair few trainings already carried out. It's a good question to ask who are the participants who come on the training of trainers because there's a, a, a very big range. Mm -hmm. So we, get, we tend to get people who work in the livestock uh, industry in those countries, but we also get humanitarians. So there's a big range in between of all of that. Um, typically, we would hope to have government participants. We'd hope to have people from um, veterinary services. We'd hope to have NGOs. We'd hope to have uh, even community level uh, people attending. So it, it is a big range of participants. For training, for, we have a very particular approach and we very much try to honour adult learning principles in the training, um, which means that we do do a lot of participatory activities. Um, most of the training is centred around a contextually specific case study uh, for people to work through so that they can problem solve applying the legs handbook. And um, we also use role play and of course to some extent a very small bit of uh, lecture. But generally speaking it's um, case study and, and role play and very interactive. So one of the tools we, we look at in the, in the legs training is, is the PRIM. Uh, the PRIM stands for Participatory Response Identification Matrix. So I'm sure you understand why we call it the PRIM. The, the purpose of the PRIM um, in the LEGS approach in an actual emergency situation is to ensure uh, that the voices of all stakeholders are heard when we're considering which response option to use. Mm -hmm. So the response options relate to um, the different technical chapters. So we have de-stocking, uh, we have support to veterinary services, we have um, food, shelter, water, restocking. Um, so it's to, to hear the voices of the government, the people who've been affected by the disaster, that's very important, um, and, and other you know, concerned stakeholders such as NGOs and so on. Um, to, to work through a decision-making process to choose a response option. Importantly, the response option also we, make, we want to look at what phase after the emergency we would use that response option. So in the training we use the PRIM um, specifically so that people can experience the, the process of decision-making with different stakeholders who have different interests. Um, so by doing that, we hope that they will also learn how to run that process in country after an actual disaster. I think, I don't know if you can see the picture in the background, but that picture is showing um, a prim process after the Pakistan floods. So the prim is primarily designed to help choose the best option for livestock owners who've been affected by the disaster. Right. Um, so very importantly, as I said before, it, uh, we really want to hear the voice of those livestock owners because they often are aware of the, the better response for them and, and when which response will fit best. Um, we've had people talk about being conflicted by immediate personal needs mm -hmm. and so they understand better when a response might be appropriate to. One of the very useful things about the LEGS handbook is it has a multitude of, of tools in the handbook. Um, and those tools are to take you all the way through um, the, the project cycle. So we have different stages. We have preliminary assessment, and there are tools for that. We have the response identification, and we have the PRIM for that. Um, we have a, a deeper analysis of technical options. So once the response option is chosen, then we can look at what are the technical considerations that might be for, the, for that particular option. 
and there are tools to uh, decision making trees and flow charts to help people work through that and then of course monitoring and evaluation so the prim is in the handbook um, in the chapter which is, relates to preliminary assessments and then decision making about response options so you can get the handbook um, you can either download it in different languages from the legs website which is livestock-emergencies.net or you can also get a hard copy from the practical action website I think the Lex Handbook is really useful for thinking about um, emergency responses, primarily because it focuses on livestock-based livelihoods. And in that way, it, it's more sustainable, the programming is more sustainable, and it, a vast amount of people use livestock for their livelihoods in some form or other. So I think it really is important and it's an area that possibly has been overlooked to some extent um, in, in humanitarian responses.